Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry version 12, and this is part of our automation series. Another probably relatively short video. We are back to looking at the DDB importer. So we already looked at part one, which was about the fact that we can bring our characters in from D&D &D Beyond, which is really, really useful because that's a really nice tool for making our characters. And we talked about the fact that there's some automation options for when we bring those in and and I said we will return to them. We're not doing that. <laughs> so because we've got the D&D &D Beyond Importer installed, there is another side to that function aside from bringing in our characters. That's what we're going to look at. So with that installed, I'm on my Compendium tab on the right hand side here. And I have this new button called DDB Muncher. That comes with the DDB Importer mod. So if I click on this, we looked at the actors one, but this is a different one. So this is doing other things. And you can probably already guess by seeing some of those subheadings. So in the common settings at the front here, we can set it to do things like, please update my things. You'd probably want to do this the first time you use it. Uh, use icons from the inbuilt dictionary. Okay, so recommend to do that because it's fast. Fine, that's the default. You can say use the icons from the SRD if you wanted to. Uh, you can, uh, so it says about there's a caution on this one, but you can read these for yourselves when you look at it. But what is useful is the fact that this has, look, in this one, it's greyed out in the moment. Use automation effects from Chris's pre made module, question mark. High quality automations for spells, features, and monsters and you need Chris's pre-made so what's really really useful is the whole of this gives these little red X's to say you don't have that installed so we are going to return to this one again when we look at Chris's pre-made we're then going to come back to DDB Importer look at bringing in our characters and look at this side as well because it is going to help us update stuff and as you can see, Chris's pre made is pretty much a, a vital module for automating things like spells and items and stuff. So MIDI QOL on its own automates uh, concentration well, it automates dice rolling well, saving throws and that kind of stuff. But when we're automating spells and things, we we use other modules that provide the items that MIDI QOL needs to drive. So if we look at this spells tab, for example, um, we've got a couple of options here and it talks about importing spells from D&D &D Beyond. So that means if you've got the digital book, whether it's the player's handbook, uh, Tasha's, whatever it is, it can import those spells. And just like for the actors tab, it is saying, hey, look, you need DAE, you need MIDI QOL, you need times up. And it would be good if you had active auras, active token effects, token of FX magic and automated animations because those are what drive the, the pretty pictures. Now we're mostly focused on the automating rather than the animating, but why would you not? So again, we'll return to that. But we can actually just click this spell munch and it's going to do its thing. And what it's doing is it's going to D and D beyond and it's pulling down all of the spells that I have access to. It's withings through. It says 442 spells and it is bringing in automated versions of them, albeit without the animations to go with it. There we go, it's done. So now when I look in, well I've got D&D &D Beyond here, if I look in uh, spells, there we go, I've got my D&D &D Beyond version of spells in here now uh, and they're very nicely put into their various classes which you might think is yeah oh, that's great uh, if you can remember what spell fits in which category. Uh, some people do it by the uh, spell school, other people do it by um, uh, levels you know cantrips, first level spells etc you know it's much of a muchness. Uh, this happens to do it that way. So we've now got all of these spells in here ready to use and look there's tr true strike so one of the things we are going to do is for Surryman because we know true strike wasn't quite working as we wanted it to uh, we're going to bring true strike in from here uh, we've now got two versions of it our cantrip and because I dragged it straight from here innate spell casting so we're going to test that in a minute but first of all let's carry on looking 
So we can bring in spells, fantastic with those automations. There's also an items tab. So again, so things like uh, you know lanterns and stuff like that that we might want some automation on, we can use D&D Beyond item images if they're available your choice um, add automation effects to equipment well yeah that's kind of why we're doing it i can click item munch and away we go we're going to pull all of those bits in as well did it finish already it was, it was quite seemed to be quite quick oh hang on a minute that's not letting me press it right okay so what about monsters uh oh yeah, there we go it's finally showing that it's doing it it was just uh, just being a bit slow. So it's actually updating 1,298 items in the compendium. That seems quite a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> so on the right-hand side, just while it's doing that, we have the D&D SRD content. This is the base stuff. So in here, we've got the base items. We've got the base spells. Those spells are done by level. We're now pulling in the D&D Beyond stuff. So in our D&D Beyond compendium, we've got our spells that come from there. So that extended list of whatever we've got access to. But we've also bringing in right now, and it's not going to let me do it because it's still working its way through all of these things, bringing in all of those items, which is really nice. So let's close that and let this finish. Uh, hopefully it won't be too much longer. I'll just sing you a song or something while it does it, or I'll edit this bit out, whichever. Let's, uh, let's see how long it takes. Do, 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 do. I mean, you only have to do this kind of once, right? You know, unless you then buy a new book and you go, oh, right, bring in my new stuff, please. Uh, note also that you can include homebrew stuff. So if you've designed and built homebrew stuff in D&D Beyond, you can import that this way as well. And I believe on the spells, yeah, again, you can import homebrew spells if you want them. So yeah, really nice. Uh, while that's continuing, I will move on to monsters. So we can also munch our monsters. So it's going to go through again all of your digital resources that you have on DD Beyond, and it's going to bring in those monsters. And so we can hide uh, monster action descriptions from players. Use AC items instead of setting flat AC. So that's things like you know, rather than going, oh, that monster has an AC of twelve. It's like why? Is it natural armor? Right, we're going to give it natural armor that provides AC of 12. So it's going to be calculated armor rather than just giving it a number. Woohoo! Finished importing items. Fantastic. So uh, if we quickly look in our DDB items now, we've got all of this. So not only do we have these, um, you know, we've got armor of fire resistance, chain mail, and things like that in here just tons and tons of items that is pulled through we've got loot here um, some whole bunch of gemstones are actually pulled through these days which is great we've got our, we've got tools we've got weapons and things like that so martial weapons um, you know battle axe plus one and they should be ready to go that's the point of doing it lovely uh, back to the monsters so we can do the same with the monsters like we did with the actors and we can pull those through as well now one caveat that you need to be aware of yes it's got about generating the automation effects which is great as long as we've got DAE and um, MIDI QOL but this is a patron only option so you need to be a patron of um, Mr. Primate to be able to use that particular function. I'm not a patron, or not a paid patron anyway, um, so I don't have that option. I can't bring in my monsters. Um, there we go. So, But it's there. You can do the same with that if you want to, if you've got the spare few pennies. And as I say, as much as I very much appreciate the people who have bought me coffees or paid for membership on YouTube, um, of course, I don't object to that whatsoever. But actually, if, you, if you're if you quite restricted on your money, these might be the places you want to do that. You might want to say, well, hang on a minute. I'm settled in where I am. I want to throw a little bit of money at Mr. Primate and so I can munch all of my spells, all of my items and all of my monsters um, and get them all up to date. That might be what you choose to do. Uh, and of course, it's like all of the patrons, you can use it, you can update it. That doesn't mean you need to continue being a patron to get the benefits of what you, you know, that download. You won't be able to download it again, but as long as there's not major updates, um, that's probably not a big problem for you. 
Anyway, let's move on. There's also an adventures section. So if, again, you've got digital versions of adventures on D&D Beyond and you want to suck those in, uh, the Fandelver campaign, Stormwreck Isle, whatever it might be, you can actually munch that in as well. Uh, and it will pull in um, pull in your adventures with everything from there. Now, that's a really great idea. Just bear in mind a lot of the... A lot of the D and D Beyond adventures, they don't have the beautiful maps that we're using. So if you did it and pulled in Curse of Strahd, you're going to get the maps out of the book, which weren't designed for digital tabletops. Um, so you don't get the beautiful maps that we're using for Aeon Bar from Aeon Bar, for example. But you can do that. Have a play, just so you know it's there. There's also a couple of tools here. Um, so this one here, set magic item prices. It will go through if I click that. That's going to, it just says here, updating item prices. It's just updated the prices on all of my items to match those in Xanthar's guide. Um, you may or may not want to do that. I've just done it anyway, haven't I? <laughs> you can reset all your compendium actor images. So if you've messed with them, changed them, deleted them, whatever you've done, it will reset them for you, which is quite nice. So there's a couple of little options in here for you too. Uh, and again, for characters, you can import so feats for patron supporters, backgrounds for patron supporters, and races. So again, you can pull those in if you're a patron and just pop them in. So if I open this feats folder, it's empty because I don't have the patron to pull in these feats. Um, my monsters is empty because I don't have the patron to pull those in, the same as my races, etc. So what you might choose to do is go, well, I haven't got the monsters one. I'm just going to get rid of that folder because it's an empty folder. It's just in the way. Yeah, by all means, do that. You know, tidy yourself up. But I have got all the spells and I have got all of those beautiful items. I just opened feats. <laughs> items, there they are. <laughs> Um, so again, we've got more automation options by pulling stuff through from uh, from D and D Beyond. Now, when we so just on the spells thing, if we import a character that has the spell on their character sheet, it brings through the spell on their character sheet for them. So, you, in theory, all of those spells are all ready to go anyway. You don't need to also use the muncher to bring in the spells. But then what happens if they find a new spell, they go up a level and all of that stuff, you're stuck with the SRD ones. Whereas this gives us access to all of those spells anyway, regardless of whether they're on a character sheet or not. And if you want to give them to your NPCs, you can just drag those out ready to go. Now on that, let's have a little test with, uh, with our friend Sorryman here, because we did have a slight challenge with getting the true strike to work because of the timings now i'm not promising that this is going to be the answer and this is actually going to work um but let's see if this new version from uh, the muncher is going to give us what we need let's uh, just roll our initiative there uh clear that chat so uh, being in combat sorry man's going first well that's convenient isn't it so we already looked at this true strike and it, it worked it was fine it was the timing of it that was the problem so True Strike, um, when we cast True Strike, it gives us advantage on attack rolls until the end of our next turn. So we cast it this turn, and then next turn we're going to get advantage on that first attack. What we found with this version that we already had on the character sheet is that, yes, he was concentrating on it, and then the beginning of his turn, it was dropping it. So we never actually got to use the advantage. So let's see how this one works. In theory, Sorryman's going to cast it so he gets advantage on this goblin. Uh, so I want the innate spell casting one. It correct, it's asking me if I want to do it. And it has, just as it did before, we are concentrating on it, but it has given that true strike ability to our target. Um, so it would seem that when Sorryman next attacks that target, he's not going to get the advantage, but the goblin will get the advantage. Let's check that and make sure that is true rather than assuming. So when we're testing stuff, oops, I've just slaughtered the poor creature. Uh, Sorryman did not get the advantage, which he should have done. Just resurrect my little dude here. <laughs> Um, so does that mean that the goblin is getting the advantage because he's got the effect on him? That's not the way it should work, but it more than likely is. So scimitar 
and we can see over here on the right hand side that he's rolled 2d20 keep the highest so indeed he has got that now again we can fix that little problem quite easily um, but what we're most interested in let me fix that let me show you how to fix that in case you missed it if I edit this spell edit not going to want me to edit because uh, it's in the middle of something oh no why is it not letting me edit it let's break concentration there we go didn't want me to do it because it was concentrating on it um, and when we look at some of these things along here and we look at the effect of true strike it's putting it onto the target what we want is apply to self rather than apply to target okay so effect is applied to the user of the item not the targets of the item so that that's a simple little change we can do to rectify that so now if we cast it even though Soriman has got the goblin targeted it doesn't give it to the goblin Soriman has got it so now when Soriman makes his attack on his next turn we can see down here on the right hand side 2d20 keep highest advantage that's exactly what we want so we fixed that little problem but he's now used that advantage it hasn't automatically ended let's move to the next round and see when that ended i was not on the right player so i'm on Soriman's turn right now so he's going to cast that right now and concentrate on his turn now he's used that action it's now the goblin's turn the goblin has his turn it's now Soriman's turn he's ready to take his advantage but it's already dropped before he makes that attack so the spell works but we still have that same problem even though we brought it in from D&D uh, uh, &D, <laughs> D &D Beyond Importer the DDBI um, yeah it's not doing what we want yet and now i'm using true strike particularly because i know that that is an in inverted commas problem one that doesn't quite work the way we want to a lot of spells last for a certain amount of time and then they expire at the end of the of that round so bless for example it lasts for those 10 rounds i think it is and at the end of the 10th round it drops before your next go so that works perfectly. True Strike shouldn't do that. And it's one of the unusual ones that actually, or not, 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 it's not that unusual, but it's a case where it works differently. It shouldn't stop at the end of, oh, sorry, it shouldn't stop at the beginning of your next round, or rather the end of the current round. It should carry over for effectively one more round. And if you make an attack, it should drop. So that's not working yet but we will get there we're still part way through this journey what we need to do is we need to make sure we've got all of the automation tools in we want in place that will fix a vast majority of these things that aren't quite working right and then see which ones are left over and it'll be interesting to see once we've added all the other things whether true strike gets fixed by any of those or whether it's one of those ones at the end we go it's an awkward one let's fix it and we will fix it. We will work out how to do that together if it's not already done for us. And again, I know a lot of people don't like True Strike. They think it's a waste of a spell. There's better things you can be doing. I get, I get that. I get that. Um, uh, and uh, Soriman has it because basically it's how he kicks off a bar fight. <laughs> so so often by a combination of intimidation and things he's intending to throw the first punch and it starts with a threat um so he's going to be using intimidation um before he lands the first punch with advantage that's his style in that situation um he doesn't use it very often but but when he does it can be very effective when uh yeah you get into a barroom brawl and the, the so-called wizard um, just absolutely pounds the first guy who's uh, brave enough to have a go. It makes for an interesting, uh, interesting encounter. It's why he's also got barroom brawler. If he wants to pick up a chair and smack them with that, or use catapult to fling a mug of ale into their face, um, it's all part of his backstory. <laughs> the the non-barbarian barbarian. Anyway, 
that's enough of this one ddb importer yes we can bring in all that stuff lovely jubbly good stuff lots of things that actually do work um it's no point in going through the entire list and showing you go and have a play do it yourself um you know how to install these things you know what other things we need in place um, but don't get too carried away because we've got more things to install to look at and then we can look at which is the best source for stuff and we will return to ddb importer once we've got those other bits in place so we can fully do those automations which might fix a couple of issues take care everyone i will see you in the next one